My name is Jamie Robertson. Uh, I have a degree in engineering physics. Uh, right out of school, I went to work for Walt Disney Imagineering, which uh, at the time was building Epcot Center. And so while the focus of my degree was physics, pretty much everything I did after that was electronics. So I guess I've been doing embedded electronics for about 30 years now. Uh, about half of that is theme park stuff for Walt Disney Imagineering. And the other half, uh, I tend to get involved in projects that are related to music and audio and the arts uh, in some fashion. The thing that I'm probably most proud of uh, from my time at Disney is uh, I designed, again, an audio system uh, for their uh, roller coasters and ride vehicles on, on their larger attractions. So if you ride any major Disney ride like GM Test Track or Rock and Roller Coaster, uh, anything that's been installed in the last 15 years and there's an audio system on the ride vehicle, that's what I did. Um, the thing that made it slightly different than this and I think really uh, unique is that it was actually a multi-voice sampler. So it was more like a sampling keyboard that was embedded and put on the vehicle. And the result was that if you rode a ride like Indiana Jones, on the vehicle you heard music, you heard tire squeals, you heard the engine sounds, you heard the, so uh, the sound of the arrows hitting the side of the vehicle. None of that was pre-mixed. Those are all individual sounds that are triggered individually by the position on the track. So essentially as the vehicle goes around the track, all those sounds are being mixed dynamically by the audio system because it's a, it was a polyphonic uh, sampler and it could play all those things at whenever it was supposed to. So that meant the tires squealed when you were going around the curve even though the vehicle may not go the same speed every time. Let's demonstrate some extreme test conditions. Okay. Oh. About five years ago, um, I had a project where I needed to design an MP3 system for a playback system for a, a, a handrail. So I needed to design an MP3 player that would fit into a very, very uh, small space. In this case, it needed to also have an audio amplifier because the speakers were contained. So my very first prototype uh, for my uh, MP3 player was hand-built, and you'll notice that it uses the breakout board the original breakout board for the VS-102 and the breakout board for the micro SD card, uh, which I bought from Spark Fun at the time. This also has a power amplifier, an audio amplifier section on it, so it drives speakers directly. That turned into this, which is the thing that actually went into the handrail. Uh, it was a bracket, uh, sits on here, speakers, uh, and everything slid into the handrail, and then the other important component on here is an infrared proximity sensor. So as someone moved their hand over the rail, they would break the beam, infrared beam, and it would play messages. And it was for wayfinding, so for people who were visually impaired, it would give them uh, uh, instructions about where they were going. The project with my, uh, Mike Gordon came along, and again, I needed an MP3 player. And, but specifically, I needed one that I could control the volume smoothly in real time. And I tried virtually every uh, less than $200 embedded MP3 player that I could find, and none of them would do that. So I figured at, at a certain point, I was spending so much time and effort testing other people's, I figured I would just do my own based on this original design. So I built another prototype, again, using the SparkFun breakout board and the SD card. This time it was uh, really kind of a stripped down standard MP3 player with, you know, next forward uh, start stop buttons, uh, onboard power supply, and a line level audio out. Uh, this worked for the first iteration of another side of in, and we actually built uh, 10 of these. It's just a, a, a bare bones PC board, uh, all done with through hole components because I want to make it easy to build them. And uh, I took this when I met Nathan and uh, showed this to him and he said you had been thinking about the same sort of thing but you wanted external triggers and so that was really the generation of the, or the, the genesis of the MP3 trigger as we know it now. No, it's late. I don't wanna uh, how I used it in the project with Mike Gordon is uh, each piece of art in the project, as soon as you turn it on, uh, needs to start playing a particular track. In this case, it's a loop track that lasts about an hour. Um, but you only want to hear it when you get close to the piece. So I needed a player that would come up 
find a track, start playing it, play it forever, and respond to serial volume messages from another microcontroller. Um, the, per the other microcontroller is a separate board that talks to the, inf uh, the, the ultrasonic rangefinder to detect the presence of people, and then it uh, uh, turns the distance into volume commands that it sends to the MP3 trigger. MP3 trigger uh, with audio output is getting power and serial commands over the serial connector. This is the board that has uh, another PSOC microcontroller and talks to the ultrasonic rangefinder and takes the position commands and sends volume commands to the MP3 player. And you can see the volume changes smoothly. And then this board also has a wireless, uh, a Cypress wireless module on it so that it can talk to the main controlling computer that's controlling the lights in the exhibit. I don't know how I got here. So the MP3 trigger was designed to be extremely easy to use and to be controlled by other microcontrollers such as an Arduino. Um, of course, so it plays MP3 files uh, directly off a micro SD card formatted as FAT16, which means you can simply pop it into a Mac or a PC and just copy the MP3 files over. Take it out, stick it in here. Uh, first, it has a uh, standard nav function, so you can navigate through all of the MP3 files that you put on the card, uh, which can be up to, I think, 512. I think that's what FAT16 supports. And you can navigate and play them with the nav wheel, regardless of how you've named them. The second way you can control it is we have broken out seven external trigger inputs which are specifically dedicated to specific track names. So triggers uh, one through seven will start tracks one through seven depending on how, how you've named them. They're simple contact closures so uh, you can either, we've provided grounds associated with each one so you literally can hook up a push button and just hit the push button and it'll trigger it. Uh, there's an internal pull up so you don't need any of that. Or you can connect it directly to the Arduino, uh, for example, digital outputs and just send it a, a high or low signal and it will start it that way. Thirdly, there's a flexible serial interface uh, which runs at 38.4 uh, kbot, uh, both transmit and receive, and you can also get power out of uh, You can apply power to the board through this connector. The connector pinout was designed to work with the FTDI BASIC this guy. So you literally can plug this on, plug it into your USB port and start sending commands to it with a terminal emulation program like Hyperterm and it will get power from that. So that will go directly to your USB port. The serial protocol, the serial command protocol allows you to do everything that the nav switch can do, everything that the triggers can do. It can also trigger up, up to 256 sounds instead of seven directly. So you, now you have access to 256 dedicated tracks. Um, and most importantly, you can also send volume commands. And you can send them very fast and get very smooth volume changes as a result. I know of no other uh, MP3 player out there uh, that will do that as well as this does. The design is pretty simple and the schematics are available on the SparkFun website product page for this. But it is essentially got two major components, the uh, VLSI VS1053 uh, MP3 decoder chip and a Cypress PSOC uh, microcontroller. PSOC stands for uh, Programmable System on Chip. It's, just, it's like the uh, at Mega is like the pick, but it's just another variety of microcontroller that I happen to like and use. 8-bit, um, nothing terribly sp special about it. Uh, the secret sauce really is the software because it's challenging to decode the file structure on the SD card when you don't have a whole lot of RAM to, to work with and you have to maintain both the directory and the FAT table and the, the actual contents of the file and keep up with the demand for the, the actual data by the MP3 decoder chip when you're playing the higher bitrate MP3 files. And at the same time you have to respond in a timely fashion to serial commands and the triggers so that it's very quick response. Do you have any words of wisdom for people who would like to create their own electronics based art installation? Uh, yeah, spend 35 bucks on an Arduino and uh, learn how to program it. I've just seen some amazing 
uh, implementations from people who have no previous electronic experience uh, who did just that. They bought an Arduino, they figured out how to do some programming. I mean, there's no faster way to learn this stuff than to have something specific, a problem you're trying to solve. For. And if you're an artist, a multimedia artist, uh, interested in interactive stuff and you've got an idea, then that's the best opportunity. And the, the price of entry for this stuff is so low these days with the Arduino and you know, adding sound with the MP3 trigger, it's really very straightforward. So I would say just jump in. You can't really hurt anything.